Early Christianity is just as mysterious and full of riddles as the ancient world. We have some confirmed information about certain historical figures like Simeon, Stylites, and often their stories are as astonishing as the legends of ancient gods or magical rituals. Simeon Stylites is known for spending 37 years on a narrow platform making him one of the most famous early Christian aesthetics. In today's video I want to delve deeper into this extraordinary character. Simeon was born around 390 AD in the village of Sisan in Cilicia, which is now part of Turkey. As a young man he was baptized and often attended sermons. Hearing the Beatitudes from the Gospels at one of these sermons he asked an elder to explain them in detail. The history is silent on what the elder told him, but after what was apparently a very impactful interpretation of the New Testament, Simeon radically changed his lifestyle, becoming a true ascetic saint. To be accepted into the monastic brotherhood of a local monastery, Simeon lay motionless at the monastery's gates for seven days and was admitted on the eighth day. Quickly the monks grew suspicious watching how this young man tormented his body and subjected himself to increasingly severe aesthetic practices, which they deemed unnecessary. For example, he would stand motionless for days with his arms raised or wrap himself in a rope for weeks until it cut into his flesh and tore it. Eventually the monks complained to the abbots about Simeon, arguing that he was disrupting their important monastic duties. After some debate, Simeon was expelled from the monastery as they did not appreciate his inclination to torture his body in the name of religion. After this, Simeon found an empty well and settled in it. After some time the monks from the monastery brought him back, but this time he did not stay long at the monastery. After becoming a hermit, Simeon decided to demonstrate to Christians the proper way to fast. During Lent he placed water and bread in his dwelling, blocked the entrance with stones and stayed there for 40 days. On the last day of Lent, Bishop Vas visited him. After clearing the stones from the entrance, he found Simeon barely alive, but he had not touched the water or the bread. Yet even this did not seem enough for a Christian feat for Simeon in the year 423, when he was approximately 33 years old, he decided to live on a pillar. Simeon chose a rather narrow tower with a small stone platform at the top. By this time he had become a well-known Christian martyr, and pilgrims from the surrounding areas began to flock to him to hear his sermons. He spent all his time apart from preaching in prayer. History tells us that he could only stand on the pillar and that is how he lived for all 33 years. However, I believe this to be an exaggeration. It is also reported that while standing on the pillar, Simeon made many accurate predictions and prophecies. There is a story describing how he was tempted by the devil who appeared to him in the form of an angel on a fiery chariot, predicting his ascension to heaven during his lifetime for his holy deeds. Simeon recognized the deceit and dispelled the vision with the sign of the cross. However, just stand on a pillar for a few days and you might see such visions yourself. Interestingly, after this incident Simeon decided to punish himself for almost succumbing to the devil. He stood for a year on the leg that he nearly used to step into the chariot. Surprisingly, Simeon had quite a few followers. They too lived on pillars or stood for hundreds of days on a stone in prayer. If we continue to believe his biography, Simeon died in the year 459 in prayer, with his hands folded on his chest. It took his disciples and pilgrims two days to realize that he was dead. It is also claimed that he lived for over a hundred years. However, historical records confirm that Simeon died at around 70 years of age. This is still remarkable considering he spent half of his life standing on a pillar. Of course, as pragmatic historians, we must understand that Simeon's biography was compiled from the records of one of his disciples. 
This is not the most reliable source given the tendency of church biographers to attribute various feats to religious figures and exaggerate their aesthetic practices. Nonetheless, the life of Simeon Stylites is impressive and reaffirms that among us live quite extraordinary people.